Welcome everybody, this is Yasser Wasifi from Learn Dental Series. In this episode, we will start our discussion about purchasing dental practice and how to set up your dental practice. I would like to declare that I have no financial disclosure or conflicts of interest with any of the presented materials. Also, I would like to remind you that this presentation is copyright protected and could not be transmitted by any mean unless you get a prayer permission from the author. By the end of this presentation, you are expected to be able to take the decision of owning a practice or not, setting up a private dental practice from scratch, find out what being my own boss will be like. Let us start with part one, which will ask you different questions to decide that do you really want to own a practice or not. Not every dentist wants to work in a practice, let alone own one. But if your ambition is to be your own boss, you need to have some idea of what you are letting yourself in for. Buying or setting up a practice is a major personal, professional and serious financial commitment. You should know this and you should consider this. The first thing you want to do is set out some of the thoughts that lie behind the purchase of setting up or setting up of a practice, the starting point from which you can navigate your personal pathway through what can be a minefield. This section will throw lots of questions at you and hopefully provide some answers for your suitability for purchasing a private practice. Please hold the source, buy in haste, prevent any leisure, okay? Please don't forget this, it will uh, be a critical matter if you buy in haste or if you set up your practice in haste, okay? Our topic will include six questions that you should answer and answer them carefully and think about your answer many times. Number one, why do you want to own a practice? Number two, who should not own a practice and who could own one? Number three, when is the best time to buy a practice? Where is the best location for a practice to buy? And what sort of practice will be looking for? You will be looking for. And finally, how to write your first business plan? Let us start with. Why do you want to own a practice? Most of us think that it is some sort of investment, okay? And you will benefit from owning your practice. The move from associate to a practice owner needs more responsibility. You should know that and you should consider it. Becoming a business owner will take over your life because it is considered as a lifetime commitment, the same as Catholic wedding, okay? That's why some dentists see buying a practice can be an investment opportunity, something they can sell and make a profit on or as an investment when they get older. For most people, owning a practice is simply a way of earning more money. But let us discuss what is the benefits to be a practice owner and practice ownership. Number one, you might have more control over what you do and how you do. But this is not always the case because there is a controlling organization in every country that controls what has been what should be done in dental practice. There is a great sense of self-determination. This is the most important advantage. You hope you are going to be able to take practice in a direction you want, not by order by your boss in governmental uh, hospitals or if you are uh, just um, a specialist in other practices. Okay, you feel self-determination. You feel more independent and relatively free from the authority of others. 
but this is not the condition all the time because as I mentioned before there is certain organizations in each country and each state okay worldwide that governs and rules the practice of dentistry including national health services care quality commissions private capitation scheme companies bank managers this is for example okay ministers of health and the fourth advantage is your energies are channeled into working for your own interests and not those of others the success is yours and you are building your repetition not other repetitions okay but this needs much more energy that you could imagine but at least these energies are yours and the channel for your benefit but also you could you should consider the drawbacks or disadvantages of practice ownership number one the financial risk with your money and with your people those people including firstly your family okay you may put your family in a future financial risk that's why uh, you should discuss the ownership of a practice before you go for this step with your family and you should have a family support for this okay you may have to work very long hours especially in the early uh, time you are setting up your practice okay not only in surgery but also in managing your business in order to to earn the money you hope you hope to have number three it's your sole responsibility for success or failure it's yours even if you have different practitioners if you have more employees but finally as the repetition is yours okay at the same time failure is yours also okay this is a great risk and you should know how you would cope with this if your practice is doesn't succeed okay even if you employ other to carry out these tasks including practice manager including public relation manager financial manager but finally ultimate responsibility for finance marketing and personal is yours you probably want to enjoy the financial security especially at uh, the early days of setting up uh, your practice okay that's why you may need to have two more time much more time uh, until your practice grow up and be on the road okay that's why who could own practice and who shouldn't own a practice but shouldn't own a practice it is not obsolete okay it's a matter of time and the training train and the train and the train ask and listen to other advices until you become ready and suitable and have all the experience to own a practice but when you take a decision please before this decision think about 15 questions and their answer because practice ownership is not for faint-hearted it's a great responsibility let us go for these questions and discuss them and how to answer them and who you should ask and wait for response or wait for the answer okay number one ask yourself are you self-disciplined what's meant by self-discipline self-discipline means being able to control your feelings and overcome your weakness this is about being able to motivate yourself st and stay on track on track this is about persistence and hard work okay then this is the first question what about myself I am self-disciplined or not but then comes much more tough questions are you level-headed or do you lose your head when things aren't going right some people 
are accustomed to that everything should be run according to manuscript okay and should not get out of this manuscript and it should be all right running procedures and those people sometimes get stuck and could not think how to solve their problems if things aren't going right then ask yourself are you one of those peoples or are you level-headed and could manage your problems? That's why you should have problem-solving skills, not only in dentistry and dental treatments, but also in managing business. What are your personal strengths and what are your personal weaknesses? Personal strengths including, are you a team player? Or you don't like to be a team player? This is one of the most important questions. Your weakness, are you a poor listener? Are you arrogant and never listen to advice? That's why you couldn't say to yourself that I'm wrong. If you didn't define your weakness, if you are arrogant and don't say that you have mistakes, then you couldn't correct and solve your problems. Finally, let us go for wider context. You should stand, start to think about much more major and important questions. Can you identify any opportunity that might give you an edge over the competition? That means that do you have additional clinical skills over and above those of other dentists in the area you will own a practice? What new experience, what distinguishes you from other dentists in this area? What skills you have? What is the advantage of your practice and your dental health service that you will submit to the community and the population? This should be considered. Are there any serious threats that could seriously jeopardize your hopes and aspiration what's meant by this okay i have lasers i have loans i have uh, any payments daily payments or bills uh, sorry uh, monthly payments or bills okay or i have any disabilities i have uh, uh, family problems all of these could jeopardize my hope okay or I am still, even I am still enrolled in any postgraduate uh, program that requires for me to be full time committed to it. I couldn't run a clinic or a business parallel to this commitment. Okay. Those questions don't answer them by your own. Please listen to your friends, listen to your families, ask them, listen to your colleagues. Without telling them the purpose of your question, you could, by this technique, build up a full picture of how others see you. Try to eliminate any weakness by training and solving this problem, okay? And work on minimizing them. It's easy to get any course or to get any knowledge about this as I mentioned before, either online or from any uh, organization that provides these courses and these trainings. Number seven, seven, are you a doer or do you tend to let things drift? Some dentists simply aren't cut out to be practice owner. Your practice will never succeed unless you are in total control of everything that happens in it. Even if you employ, as we tell you before, if you employ a manager, uh, a marketing manager, a financial manager, a PR manager, but by the end, it's all about you being in control. Number eight, do you have the unconditional and going support of your family? As we discussed, 
your family may be at financial risk, especially in the early days. That's why please don't underestimate the importance of this question. Relationships, even between families, become very strained when things are, are going, aren't going well. That's why selling the idea of practice ownership to your family might not be too difficult, but retaining their ongoing support and understanding through the difficult times is also going to be vitally important. That's why you should discuss with them what are the expected risks and what are the benefits. They will understand you and support you surely if you discuss it with them. How do you cope under pressure? Let me give you an example. If you are an associate in a dental practice, working hard and taking home more or less the same amount of money, same salary every month, more than enough to pay your mortgage, house bills, loans, leasings, and other expenses, other monthly expenses, you should ask yourself, is the current situation is stressful or not? If it is stressful and you are still associate, what is going on when you are a practice owner? Sure, it will be worse. That's why if it is not stressful, you should know if you will be able to cope with the pressure expected of running your own show and practice or not. But if you start with a stressful condition when you are associate, okay, what is the condition when you are the owner? By all means, to be a, an owner of a practice, dental practice, it's a stressful condition. That's why if you are originally at a stressful condition, then don't start or don't think to own a practice unless you correct this condition by a mean or another. Then, would you be prepared to work seven days a week? Sometimes it is necessary to work 24-7. Long hours, not only in surgeries, not only in treatment of patients. Treatment of patients, patients are not available to come to you 24-7 or seven days a week. But you may have to work long hours with managing your business, okay? And hard work is the name of this game. You should be aware of this. Then, are you a leader or a follower? Being a practice owner means being a leader. And if you want to make a success of things, being an inspirational, exceptional leader, if possible. Can you make quick decisions when needed? This is an important question. Quick decisions not only in treatment plans, but also in your management. It should be a quick decision and at the same time, right decision. That's why you should have problem solving skills and you should be trained to do this. Then coming, are you a sticker or a quitter? What is meant by that? Ownership can be a lonely place when things get tough. Will you be prepared to see it through? And you are you prepared to see the truth? Owing a practice is going to be a bumpy ride. While you be all for handling the keys back the first time something goes wrong. You should quit at this time. You should be brave enough to say to yourself, this is not suitable for me and I should quit now, otherwise the condition will get worse and worse. Then, can you learn from mistakes and take advice? This is what related to what we asked you about your weakness. Are you a poor listener? This is fundamental whereas or whether or not the practice is going to succeed or fail. 
There is no successful practice without mistakes, but the trick is to learn from your mistakes. And first of all, you should agree that you have mistakes. You shouldn't be arrogant and deny that you haven't mistakes. This is the first step for solving your problem. If you don't or won't learn from your mistake, you will continue making the same ones time after time. And that's not good. Are you in a good health? This is finally. Are you having any systemic illness? Okay, skeletal problems. All of these may jeopardize your continuation in success. And as I mentioned before, you should have enough time because you are expecting that you are working long hours than expected, especially in the first early days. This is a most important factor. Finally, if the answers to any of these questions are less than 100% positive, please think twice about taking the decision now Okay, about plunge into ownership of a practice. And this does not mean that you are not suitable for ownership now, but it is just, just a condition that contraindicates how unfavorable for you for ownership now. But when you are detecting and pointing out your weakness, weakness, what of those 50 questions are not satisfying by 100% positivity, then you could go for extra training, extra knowledge, asking for uh, practice management courses, uh, asking for practice management knowledge, go for online, asking colleagues, asking experts, until all the 15 questions will be answered 100% positive. Then, if your answer is 100% positive for these 15 questions and you are ready to be a practice owner, when it is the best time to buy a practice? The best time to buy a practice is defined by three headings, personal, professional, and financial. Personal, common sense, should tell you that if your personal life is in turmoil, now is not the best time to start thinking about buying a practice. You should have all your mind, all your heart focusing on setting up your practice and starting your early days, okay, to raise it up and design your success map. That's why you should Personally, your life should be clear without any problems, okay? That's why you wouldn't think of setting sail in a storm, okay? Instead of setting up your uh, practice while all the condition and all the environment and all the climate is clear and suitable for you. Then, this is about your personal life. What about your professional uh, experience? Professionally, you need to have enough clinical experience under your belt. So practice ownership is probably not something you should do until you have got the hang of successfully treating patients, successfully treating patients in a practice setting. Okay, that's why we asked you before. What distinguished you from other practices? What is the difference between the services you provide to your patients okay, compared to others? What makes you different? Then comes the financial factor. Either in a personal financial factor or a general economy of the country or the state that should be considered. You will never know for certain if the time is right financially, you simply must take a decision based on the current situation. Okay, one thing is worth pointing out, 
and that is that if your personal finances are not in a good order it is going to be harder for you to secure borrowing you are the only one who will know when the time is right it's your decision not other decision you could decide well is it suitable for you now at this time either personal or professional or financial is it a suitable time this decision is based on your answer for the previous 15 questions you would not even think about owning a practice unless all the three mentioned factors are favorable then all the conditions are favorable and now you would like to purchase a property to set up your practice where is the best location for a practice to buy regardless of the sort of your practice your location should be with distinct marketing specifications which includes easily located and rigid with the least traffic jams available car parking area away from commercial noises but what is most important you should be near to hospital based practices for any emergency again location should be with the selective marketing specification what sort of practice will you be looking for because this determines the assets equipment furniture uh, working hours employees how to set up all of these according to the sort of practice either the sort of practice be a national health service or a private or mixed general or specialist one okay every type of practice having its own opportunities and its own threats national health service means that you are contracting with a national health service to provide uh, dental health care for a population in a certain area or a certain city okay this might have a certain amount of financial security because you are earning money money okay by capitation okay it may be uh, a semi-fixed income but could potentially be difficult to expand because you're already contracting with a certain amount of monthly payment per person private practice are more prestigious but will be at a premium in terms of purchase price capitation based income could be more financially secure than a fee per item practice again location is important and the location may determine the demographic character of your patients make sure you are away of the treats to each type of practice what are you on your own personal pros and cons of owing each type of practice this is important in general worldwide each country or state have their own regulations that govern dentist classification and type of practice you are allowed to join manage and or own okay these regulations are performed and supervised by as an example ministers of health general dental council of united kingdom or like saudi commission for health specialities in uh, saudi arabia or egyptian dental syndicate in egypt then if everything is already is okay and you are going now to set up your practice before all of that you should write your first business plan what is business plan if you are decided to be a businessman or a businesswoman as it is similar to that to be a dentist having a private practice all of these should have a business plan as you write a treatment plan to treat peoples okay peoples in business write business plan know who you are joining both of them you are a dentist who design a, business, a treatment plan for a patient 
but you are a practice owner, you should have your own business plan. It constitutes the road map of your practice. Okay, it is it constitutes the first step in your road for securing your practice. Business plan also runs to covers three major items: operational, financial, marketing. Operationals, the present the premises in which the practice is located, equipment, employees, okay, the service on offer, all of these are the operational part of your business plan. Then come financial, financial including setup cost and running cost. Setup cost including fixed and variable costs once the practice is up and running including minimal financial requirements. Okay, just for only the important thing, okay, not extra luxury uh, uh, items that cost too much. Finally, marketing plan, how potential customers are going to be approached. When you are going for much more details for your business plan, it will be discussed in full details in the last uh, chapter of this course or last section of this course, but let me give you an idea about the sections of your business plan and the importance of each one, okay? Your business plan should include, number one, set the scene, attach a copy of your Calicrum Vita CV, okay? It's an important, even if you are just keeping this business plan, okay, with yourself, to be respected every now and then, to be reviewed every now and then, and to be just a ruler to measure your success. It's an indicator to measure your success, okay? Then set out your objectives, both at a personal level and at business level. Then coming, analysis of the market in the area, you will get your practice, okay? That's why you should know what different services you could provide, okay? And at the same time, it may guide you what is the deficiency in dental health services in this area, okay? Who are the competitors in this area? And how to run this competition in an ethical uh, terms. Then, set out your approach to marketing your service according to the analysis of market, you could design and assign your marketing plan. Then describe your future plan for researching and developing your service in terms of one year, five years, 10 years. Okay, what's your developing plan? Okay, set out your financial plan, either for setup cost or run your uh, Proposal for running cost. Give an accurate appraisal of strengths of the management of the practice. Okay, highlight any risk and the problems that you have identified. Show that you have thought carefully about these and indicate how you propose to deal with them. Those two items mean that you should uh, design your SWOT analysis strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threat, okay? Finally, finish your plan with your main conclusion, making sure that you leave the reader with a very positive impression. Your plan should include an executive summary, which although also mentioned last, actually appears at the beginning. Your summary is prepared and written the last item of your business plan, but when you presented it and editing it, should be at first, okay? It is a complete overview or overall summary of every part of the plan. What is the importance of number nine and number 10? You may present your business plan to get a license from any of the organizations we mentioned before, or you may submit it to, for financiers to fund you if you don't have enough fund for setting up your practice, you may also submit it 
when you would like to contract with any national health service provider. Finally, those are my textbooks and please feel free to ask me as your questions are welcomed at any time. You could ask me by commenting to this video and I will reply to you as soon as possible. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and update and not uh, activate the notification to receive all the updates. Finally, I would like to thank you for assigning this time to listen to me. Until we meet again, thank you. Yes, close here.